Welcome to a new video in the introduction series of videos to systems biology. In this particular video, we ask the question, what are the system inputs and the system outputs? And this is the last of three videos devoted to similar topics. In the first two, we asked, what are the states and what are the parameters? And it will be easier to understand this video if you first see the two others. So if you haven't, uh, please do. And uh, just as for the two other videos, uh, this is part of the teaching material of ISP Group, and uh, you're free to use it and share it as long as you say where it's from. And just as before, this is part of the overall process of learning how to uh, formulate a mathematical model from some existing uh, biological or biochemical knowledge or hypothesis. And this will ultimately lead us to the end of phase one, where we learn whether this hypothesis um, can serve as an explanation for experimental data or not. If we can reject it or if we uh, cannot reject it. So, let's look at some basic um, concepts and uh, definitions. And we start as before with the standard state space description of the model which contains three types of, of equations. Uh, the first is the um, uh, differential equations, the ODEs, and the second are the initial conditions, and the third are the measurement equations. And um, here we have the inputs, and uh, they're easy to recognize in this course because we always call them U, uh, in principle, you could call them something else, but it's a common thing to call them U. Um, at least if you look to control engineering and system identification kind of literature, then they're usually called U. Um, uh, and they appear in two places, in, or they can appear, don't have to appear, but they can appear in two places, in the differential equations and in the measurement equations. Um, the outputs, they uh, appear here in... Um, in the last uh, equation, and you usually separate between uh, two types, between the measured outputs and the simulated output. Um, and the measured output, those are, those are simply the measurements that we have. So it's usually a file or a matrix or something with values that you got from the experiment, the readout of the, of the, ex of the experimental machine that you have to measure things. Um, and the simulated output you get uh, from simulating the model uh, in the computer and then getting output which uh, can be compared with the measured output. So these two will be compared as we move along in this course here. So we have these three things, inputs, measured output, Y, and simulated output, which we call Y hat. Okay, and uh, now when we know what they are called, let's look at some basic properties. So, um, the inputs, uh, they may vary over time, and usually they vary somehow over time. Usually it's some kind of change, you do something at a specific time point. Uh, sometimes it changes a lot all the time, sometimes, and pretty often it only changes at some quite few time points. And uh, the inputs are what you do to the system. So they are typically known. Um, and this thing that you do to the system, it's typically that you add something, for instance, some insulin or some other hormone, some other stimulation. You might uh, flip the MRI machine, the spin, or it's basically what you are doing. And since it's something that you are doing to the system, it's not being affected by what happens inside the system. Uh, uh, so it's something that is sort of, we know the whole input series uh, uh, because it's independent uh, of what happens inside the system. Whereas the thing that happens inside the system, they're usually interlinked. So you don't know one until you know all the others. But the use you know. So the use go into the system and uh, then you have these two outputs. You have the measured outputs and they are also typically varying over time. Uh, because they usually depend on the states or the uh, reaction rates or something like this. Uh, and these, as I said before, they are just a given set of values and they are independent of the model. They have, uh, 
no dependency on the model. If you change things in the model, the experimental data will be the same. Um, but the simulated output, uh, on the other hand, they depend on all the assumptions that you have and on all the parameter values that you choose. So if you change parameters, usually y hat change. So y hat is a function of the parameters. So now we can uh, go to this uh, control engineering view of a system and we can um, get the full picture of uh, all the components that enter into a model. So we have these inputs that go into the system that we know that are controlled and usually a function of time. Uh, and then we have the system and out of the system comes some response which we measure and store the values in uh, Y. And when we want to optimize our model of the system, uh, then we look for parameters uh, that give the simulated output Y hat the best agreement with Y. And then on the inside of the system, uh, are things that we can't see, but that we somehow assume are there, or we know, or uh, hypothesize that they are there. And there are basically two things. It's the states, which depend on time, given by differential equations, and the parameters, which do not depend on time. Uh, and the states you can calculate by using this function f, uh, which gives the derivative at each time point, if you know the states, and uh, x0, uh, or the uh, states at the starting point. So this allows you to start, this allows you to calculate the derivative, and then you just go in the derivative, and so on, and then you get the states. And then once you have the states and the parameters, you can combine all of these things to get the simulated output by using this function g. So these are all the things, there's nothing more that goes into the uh, definition of a model, as we do it now in this course here, using differential equations. So now let's look at these three examples again. And let's look at these final two things, the inputs and the outputs. Um, so we have, uh, in this first example, we have it in the state space form. Two differential equations, some measurement equation, and some other definitions. Um, and here, uh, the inputs are easy to recognize in this course because we call them U. Uh, so we just look for the symbol U here. Um, and, and the output, they're also easy to recognize because they are called Y hat. Uh, but it's also good to, to not, so if you only answer Y hat, you, you basically uh, will only get half a point. Um, because that's a generic answer. So you also need to see what is it in this specific case. Um, and here it is, uh, we can measure the state x1 plus some offset parameter, ky. And um, uh, here it's important that you become fluent in terms of interpreting things. So you see that you, uh, the input enters into differential equation of, uh, of uh, the first state. And what we can measure is the state x1 plus an offset parameter. So if you see this in text, or if you see this equation, it should sort of be the same thing. So it should be like hearing a word in English and in Swedish or something like this, if you know both languages. Uh, and I said this in some previous video as well, uh, and it's that um, uh, the measurements are not uh, the thing that they measure. Um, so this is sort of the simulated output and this is just um, uh, this is the state. So this is sort of inside the system and this is outside the system. They might have the same value if you have a, a, a specific, if you have a, a measurement equation that looks like this, but they are still sort of different types of entities. Okay, second model. So question, what are the inputs, what are the outputs? And uh, we specified uh, also this um, uh, this example in the previous uh, in the previous uh, two videos. Uh, so now let's just look for the inputs and the outputs. Um, and here we see that there is no U anywhere. So here this system simply doesn't have any input. Uh, and uh, we have one measurement equation, one y hat, which is equal to k2, which is the rate constant of the second rate uh, expression. So no inputs and we can measure k2. Um, and here I want to add, if you have a situation like this where you have no inputs, uh, the system simply runs by itself, you're not controlling it in any way, 
Uh, but um, in some cases, it depends a little bit on, on the system and on the experimental setting and so on, you can still consider the initial conditions as a sort of input. Uh, because here, uh, the, the amount that you have, uh, the, co the concentration that you have of uh, this A, B, and C, they um, uh, could be something that you sort of add to the system and then you let it run by itself. Uh, so it could be that uh, the initial conditions can be considered as a sort of input. It depends on how, how the system is structured. Okay, final example. Uh, same question. And now in um, uh, the, the final uh, form, this interaction graph form. So we have these two reactions and we have these additional assumptions as we had before. And now we are looking for the inputs and the outputs. The inputs here are U, which, uh, as I also explained in some previous video, you can also see that this one is not affected by the system from the type of arrow here. So this means that this is affecting this reaction, but it's not a substrate of the reaction. It's not being used, whereas Z here is a, 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 the second substrate to this reaction. So Z is being used, U is not being used. U is just the input. Uh, and then we are looking for the measurement equation here, which says that we can measure V2, so the re reaction rate, how many re reactions we have per second, something like this, uh, times some unknown scaling constant. So the input, some kind of enzyme or catalyzer or facilitator or something of the first reaction, and we can measure the rate of this one times some unknown scaling constant. So that's it. Now we can recognize all the components in all these three forms of writing up a model. So that's the first little unit. Now we'll come some other videos.